Every time I'm walking through the house trying to do what I'm doing, you're calling the children's name out loud so I can hear them. You keep messing with me. Every, every time there's something going on around, you're telling them, go check on your father. Go check on your father. You keep messing with me. Every time we get ready to go to worship as a family and we get all dressed up and you line up the kids and you say, look at my beautiful children. Don't they look so nice, Hannah? You just keep messing with me. The situation is that I'm married to him and you're married to him, but you keep having his children and you keep making me feel like trash, like trash. But we keep worshiping as a family. We all dressed up, but all hell is breaking loose in my house. God says there's some people who are all dressed up. You're coming to worship, but you're acting like your situations aren't there. It's looking like one thing on the outside, but inside of the house, things are all jacked up. It may not be Penina that's in there, but somebody's in there wrecking havoc in your home. But you keep coming to the temple and to the tabernacle, bringing your sacrifices Sunday after Sunday, all dressed up, coming in, looking like nothing is going on. But if you look at the fact of life, the fact of life would say that you've got a situation that you really can't deal with. You've got a person that you can't really stand anymore. But for some reason, God just keeps mixing you all up with them and requiring you to come to worship with the same people that don't like you. Worship. It's something that causes us to embrace our faith when we have to worship with people who we know mean us no good. See, everybody that comes up in the sanctuary doesn't mean you're good. And in this, we find that Hannah continues to be a part of what she's doing just because it's what the setup was. She was told she was supposed to do this. She was supposed to do this. This is what they do. This is what they do. So they're worshiping. Can you imagine going to worship and you're sitting right beside the one who you know This is the embracing the faith part. Because in this caterpillar stage, in this, in this larva stage, I, I, I'm shedding old skin. And so I'm going to continue to feed and keep eating. But what I have to feed on in this stage is the word of God. So although I hear all the things that Penina is saying in my ears, I'm shedding that old skin. I'm getting rid of the things she's called me. I'm getting rid of the things she said about me. And I'm feeding on the word of God. Oh, I know I'm in the caterpillar stage. I look nothing like I should look. I don't look like how I feel. I can't be what I think I should be. And most importantly, I can't give what I think I should give. But I'm going to just keep feeding on this word of God. I'm going to just keep coming to the temple and worshiping because I've got to shed old skin. And the only way I can shed old skin is to keep feeding on the word of God because the more I feed, the more I grow. And the more I grow, the more I shed. And the more I feed, the more I grow. And the more I grow, the more I shed. And the more I begin to do this, I just begin to shed the things that you're trying to put in me penina penina it's women's day it's women's day i look nothing like how i feel i should look because god told me that i was going to be a butterfly but right now i'm crawling around slithering on the ground as this caterpillar and I can't be what I think I should be. And most importantly, I can't give what I think I should give, which is a child to this man. One of the things I think we need to stop doing is we need to stop trying to give something to someone that somebody else has already given them. As women, we have to learn to be unique and do something different. Don't you want to do something for him that she can't do? She's already given him some children, and you're just trying to copy what she's already done. I mean, I'm just saying, I believe that sometimes we just try and pattern ourselves after the wrong things. And here she is in pain and agony and humiliation, and she keeps going through the same stuff, but she's embracing her journey, having to keep shedding skin over and over again. But this is the feeding stage. I'm just going to keep feeding and going through. It's got to make me stronger and better because I'm embracing my journey. My name is Hannah, and it means favor. It means God's grace. But Lord, don't nothing 
something seemed to be working out in my favor right now. I go to the temple and worship, but when I go back home, I still go back to the same mess. I come here on Wednesday, but when I go back home, I still go back to the same mess. The good book said, however, that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And in my experience, says God, I need to attach myself to you and get some rest from this mess so I can get to who you really called me to be. This is the situation. She realizes that something's got to change. And so what she does is she moves from the situation to seek God to the separation. The separation. The separation. See, the caterpillar finds a resting place and makes the transition to the pupa. And this is actually identified as the separation. What does Hannah do? Hannah seeks God in prayer with her petition, and then she has to remain in the process of time. The prayer, she says, is bless me with a son, and I will give him to you for service. The situation, and now with a separation. See, sometimes we have ourselves, and hold this for me, please. We'll put it around you. No, no, we don't want to put it on your neck. Not in Oklahoma. All right. All right. No, no, no. Wrong part of the United States. Okay. Sometimes we attach ourselves. Now, I'm not saying she did the wrong thing because I love her. To the wrong thing. And so when we're attached to the wrong thing, rather than us finding rest through the attachment, we find struggle. Because rather than being able to stay still, we've got something pulling us that way, and then we're trying to pull this way, and what happens? It breaks. It breaks. Because there was a tussle that went on in there, which means if you are separated and you are trying to get yourself to where God is, but there's some things that's pulling and tussling on you, you're going to have to deconnect yourself and get from who those people are, because otherwise, every time you're trying to hear from him, you're not going to hear from him because you're not really separated. But Hannah realized that she had to separate herself. And what happens with the caterpillar is the caterpillar separates itself and attaches itself to a plant. To a plant. To a plant. Now, the plant has some specific nutrients in it that's designed for growth and designed to help make the change take place. And so the caterpillar realizes that he has to attach itself to this plant. This is the separation. Science says that the caterpillar attaches itself to the plant and it sheds skin one last time. That's the last time I'm gonna let her get on my nerves. That's it. Mm -mm. Because I'm attaching myself to this plant here. This is the separation stage. Yeah, that's the last time I'm going to let that attitude come up on me and make me act a fool. I'm not just not going to do it. I, I, I'm done with her. I'm shedding that skin the last time. I'm attaching myself to something greater now. That's the last time I'm going to let you look at me the wrong way and, and make me want to respond in a way that's out of character for the beautiful butterfly that I'm becoming. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm shedding that skin for the last time time. That's the last time I'm going to be jealous when I look at you and your beautiful children because they are beautiful because my man is handsome. But that's the last time I'm going to look at your beautiful children that my man gave you and be upset and jealous about that. I'm shedding my old skin for the last time. That's the last time I'm going to look at what every other woman has and wish I had that and wonder why that wasn't me. You know, I'm shedding that. That's the last time. That's the old skin. I'm, I'm done away with that. That's the last time I'm going to look at everything that you say your husband is doing for you and, and wonder why mine isn't doing that for me. That's the last time. I'm shedding that old skin. That's the last time I'm going to have low self-esteem and think that I'm not worth anything. I, I'm shedding that skin because I'm attached to this next place of my separation. That's my old skin. That's the last time. That's the last time I'm going to look in the, be in, the in the mirror and not think that I'm beautiful. I know I'm beautiful because God made me and I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm shedding that old skin. And in this moment of separation, Hannah 
connects herself to God through prayer. Notice that the position of the caterpillar when it attaches itself to the plant and sheds the skin for the very last time, the outside activity changes in this stage because God has to deal with you on the inside. And actually in this stage, the caterpillar goes from slithering all around the ground and not looking like who it is to being put in what looks like a cocoon almost. And so God separates the caterpillar from the ground and places it to its now new feeding place where the transition will happen. The outside activity changes. She refrains from participating with the family during this process. Right, say in the process of time. The book says that after she had prayed this prayer, she came back that she slept with Elkanah and that she knew she was to have a child. Well, during the nine months, she separated herself. She went into the room. She did not come out. When they went up to the temple, she did not go to the temple. She refrained from participating with the mess during the process of time. See, in the process of time, the mess has to stop or else you will miss what God is trying to do for you inside of the pupa. She refrained from participating with the negative interactions during the process of time. She refrained from looking at other things that took her focus off of God during the process of time. And the Bible even says that after her son was born, she continued to refrain from participating until he was weaned from milk. And then maybe even until the age of 10, according to some accounts. See, the pupil stage can take days, months, or even years, depending on the type of butterfly. And because it has to wait for the appropriate season to emerge, sometimes you just have to wait. See, God just takes you out of the picture sometime. And though you can see me, he won't allow people to see you. And you'll just be there in the pupil, just like this. Anybody seen Reverend Bowles? Mm -mm. We haven't seen her in a long time. Oh, she'll probably be back a couple of days. We still haven't seen her. We saw we saw Panina, but we haven't seen so we haven't seen Hannah. We haven't seen Hannah. You know, she prayed for that child at the altar the last time, and we haven't seen her since that. No, but no, but I know Panina was mad though because she came home and found Hannah in the bed with. Big E, and so she got a little bit upset, and <laughs> since then we haven't even seen Hannah. Haven't seen her anyway. See, people would start to wonder where you are when God puts you in the separation stage. But when God takes you out of the picture, your enemies actually think they have won. But can't y'all see P Penina? Penina, I mean, they think he's won. And I'm gonna take this off because I gotta go to her. Can't you see her at home? <laughs> because Hannah hasn't been out in a while. There she is in the kitchen cooking. And you know what she barely has on. And she's in the kitchen and she's doing her thing and just walking around just so glad because anybody seen Hannah? The children have, no, we, we don't know where Miss Hannah is, baby. We don't know where she is. And she's just all around looking and working and doing what she's doing and going to the temple and coming back because 10 years is a long time. That means she's, she's missed 10 years of sacrifice. She's missed 10 years of praise, 10 years of worship. Actually, Penina might begin to think that she's not even coming back out anyway. This is just my man now. We're going to do what we've got to do. We're going to keep this thing going. We don't have a clue when she's coming back. I'm so glad she finally realized that she need to get on out of here. She is gone, right? She don't have to worry about her anymore. She's got her man. She's got her kids. They're in the palace. They're doing what they're doing. But see, what they don't realize is the reason that you don't see me is because a change is happening. See, it's actually the last transition before God's glory is revealed. Well, what's happening in the pupa? The science says that inside the pupa, the tissues that are made up in the caterpillar begin to rearrange inside of the cocoon. It begins to form a head, a body, six legs, and four wings. And then it has to stay in there because he cannot be revealed until the appropriate time. See, not only was she in the pupa stage, but she was in there being changed. She was being rearranged. She had been separated from everything that was holding her back so that God can really begin to work on her, work on her inside, work on her outside. That's 
why it didn't matter what she had on on the outside. It didn't matter what was going on on the inside. And in this time of rest, she began to hear from God. In this time of peace, she began to hear from God. In this space and place, in the process of time, God separated her from everything that was causing her confusion to simply pour into her who he had created her to be. Now, mind you, the, the biggest thing in, in this place was that Hannah had to understand that she was leaving the one that she wanted to please to the one that she knew had done her wrong the whole time. Sometimes we've got to be willing to let God do something in us, even if it means letting go of some things that we want to hold on to. And so when she lets go and she becomes attached right here, God pours into her. Now, not only was she in the pupil stage, but the things that were attached to her were also in this stage. See, the gift she had asked God for was the son. So not only had she not come out to have the glory revealed, but the gift had not come out yet. See, sometimes God blesses us with something and we release it to society too, sick, too quick to be seen. You haven't finished maturing your gift that God has given you, so just hold on one bit. You, you haven't learned everything that you need to learn with what he's blessed you with, so keep it in this stage in the people so you can help to mature. See, you got to learn how to grow things first and get it right so when it comes out, it flies the way it needs to fly. But oftentimes we are too quick to respond respond to the blessings that we get and too quick to want to show it off that we blow the blessing before we get to if we give credit to the blessor somebody didn't hear what I said sometimes we're often too quick with what God gives us to get the blessing out to show off that we blow the blessing before we get to give the praise to the blesser who gave it to us and so it becomes about the blessing and rather the blessor but Hannah was embracing the faith Hannah knew her God she had to she's been through too many situations see when you have to go through a lot of things in life that's when your faith gets stretched so she had been through enough to know God I know you're not gonna leave me right here she'd been through enough to know God you have given me this child and I said I was gonna give him back to you and I wanted to be my best see Hannah was all about giving her best giving her best and she thought that what her best was was a child for her husband but really it was a child for the king you got that didn't you she thought that her best gift would be able to give her husband a child, but actually her best gift was to be able to give the king a child. And so in this place and space in the pupil, in her prayer, she begins to realize, wait, wait a minute, this whole thing that I've been going through, this transition, this change in the process of time, really was never about the son anyway. It was about me. It was never about Penina. It was about me. It was never even about Elkanah. It was about me. It was about you taking me through this process, God, so I could see how you set me up from the beginning to be who I am and to go through this thing and to do it all in the space and place of worship. See, the key here is that while she was going through and while she was being talked about and while she was being criticized and while she was being put down, she was still going to worship. See, nothing was really wrong with Penina, not really, except for uh, uh, she knew that uh, Big E loved Hannah more, but she could cover that up real easy. So she's going happy happy to worship. Everything's all right. She's standing there. She's doing a thing. But the key is that Hannah was also going happy, but not happy because of what she didn't have, but happy because of who she had. And so when she was crying out to, to the God, she knew that her only hope and source could come from him. And so when she's in this stage of separation, God changes her. He gets her ready to present there's something about a presentation. And if you know me, I'm very big on presentation. Presentation. But when God takes time to get you right for presentation, you better allow him to take as long as he wants. Because when that cocoon begins to open and the thing that he's been working on is time to come forth, uh, the, the, the Bible says that to everything there's a season. And so some of us have been going through a season and wondering when is it going to be the appropriate time for God to showcase what he's birthed in me? When is it going to be the appropriate time for God to showcase the gifts that he's given to me? When is it going to be the appropriate time for me to stand up and be who God has called me to be? God says the time is now. 
The time is now. See, the fact of the matter that you've been bracing the journey in good days and bad days, the fact of the matter that you've been bracing the journey when you had highs and lows symbolizes the fact that I've been right there with you the course of the way. Some of us think that because we go through things that God is not with us. But God says, that's when I'm right there with you. And so as Hannah looks at this and she realized that, uh oh, some, something is happening. It's, it's the stage. And what actually happens is the caterpillar's own genes and the climate come together and it indicates that the time is ripe and the butterfly pops out. It's the adult stage. The adult stage. It's not about what you look like, but rather what you do. It's a whole lot of women who look like butterflies, but they're really just flies. I said, they look like butterflies, but they're really just, you get, I, they're, they're really just flies. Oh, you're dressed up, but you're annoying. You, you look real pretty, but I just wish you just get away from me because your attitude is just so messed up that's a fly oh you hear it you're on time and you got the right things to say but every time i get ready to get my food you're just hanging around buzzing around me Bzz, flies Bzz, flies i swatch you and you go down and you come right back up get a little spray and a spray on you and you pop right back up flies but you look like a butterfly god says we've got to stop confusing people We've got too many Christians who look like butterflies, but you're acting like flies. You, you, you don't have the love of God in you. you. You're not walking around with an attitude of faith. You, you're not forgiving. You're not kind. You're not loyal. You're not upright. You're not just. You're not holy. You're not righteous. You're not filled with the spirits, but you're just flies. You're ratchet. You're nasty. You got a bad attitude. You always got something to say. Always jealous. Always putting your mouth on somebody. Always involved in the he say, she say. Always rolling your eyes. Always sucking your teeth. Always trying to start something. Always trying to figure out what somebody else did. Fly. Always trying to see whose business you can get in. Fly. Always trying to show up when people don't want you around. Fly. It's just flies. Oh, y'all, y'all have seen some flies? You've seen some flies. Are you a fly or are you a butterfly? Because the butterfly has something about it that attracts you to it. Unlike the fly. You want to stay as far away. If people aren't attracted to you and don't feel power, empowered when they're in your presence, you might not be a butterfly. So this might not be for you because this process in time is about the butterfly. And we're not talking about the flies today. So if you're going to continue in this right now and you realize you're a fly, I need you to do something with me. I need you to go back to right here with me. I need you to attach yourself back to this plant. Now, I'm doing this for real because this is for all my flies, because I got some flies in here. But see, we're going to do some restoration today. Because in this place, fly, if you attach yourself to the plant, and you attach yourself to the very word of God that Jesus has given us, he can put you in this place and space right here. And even if that doesn't even have to take 10 years to change you, he can change you in the next three seconds. And so if you want to move from being a fly to a butterfly, then attach yourself right here to this here plant and tell yourself, Lord, I don't want to be a fly anymore. I'm ready to be a butterfly. Because when we get ready to fly right now, I don't want to leave anybody out. So if you used to be a fly, that's your old skin. Shed it one last time. 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 Because the fourth stage is the celebration. The celebration. And the only people who can celebrate are those who he allows to come out at the appropriate time. The appropriate time. The celebration. Let's go back because I don't want you to miss it. So the first thing was the setup. The stuff that you cannot change. It just is. The setup. Then the situations were the stuff that you had to go through because of how you were set up. So you dealt with all that. In this stage, you embrace the journey. You embrace the faith. Then it was the separation, the most difficult part. But you got to leave some folk behind sometimes and be separated so God can pour into you. And then we have the celebration. See, 
the adult butterfly and embracing the faith is when you realize or you ask yourself the question, is it about God or is it about you? Is it about God or is it about you? See, as a matter of fact, Elkanai had both a fly and a butterfly living in his house. He had them both. He had a fly and he had a butterfly in his house. But you see, it's celebration time. Now remember, Hannah had been hidden for months, for years, because she was separated. She's just her and God. We, we chilling God. But can't y'all see it in the house when the appropriate time had come? <laughs> oh, you, you can see it. <clears throat> Biggie, Penina, like, who was that? Now, you know, he knew her voice. And so all of a sudden, Hannah is, is calling him from the back of the house. Can't y'all see it? He comes out, comes out. A matter of fact, knock on the door. Baby, get up. <laughs> And P Panana laying there. Panono, uh-uh, don't worry about it. You can stay right there. No, it's I call it Panono. <laughs> it's time to go. What, what, what does she mean? It's, it's time to go. No, you come on too, uh, Panono. We're going to the temple. To the temple? You ain't been to the temple in 10 years. What? You can see she's getting up real fast, getting the stuff together, and Hannah just looking all around. Children! Children. Now, mind you, what you don't realize, she's not just calling Penina's children. She's calling her own now. See, what you forgot is that doing this stage wasn't just that she was waiting on the baby. She had the son and had nursed him and weaned him and grew him and matured him. And so now when Penina is lining up her, she's got one to line up too. So she lines up the children. Now, children, come along. Come along. Where are we going, Miss Hannah? We're going to the tabernacle. Wait a minute. Now, her position has changed. Wait a minute. Now, she's leading them to the tabernacle. And can't you see Big E getting this stuff? We got to go. And Penono is like, baby, where are you going? We're going to this. You're going to go with her. I sure am going to go with her. And so now they're going up to the tabernacle. She's excited now. Her, her, her disposition has changed. Once she was going to the tabernacle, where well, she was feeling all downtrodden. She was the caterpillar, taking a long time to get there, but she was still going. Oh, now she's flying. Now she's flying. And Pinono can't figure out what has happened. She doesn't understand what took place because God did the transition out of sight. See, God will take you out of sight, change you, and bring you back in the sight of the people who were talking about you. They won't understand how it happened. Happen. They'll just know, oh, you don't look like you used to look. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't dress like you used to drag. You don't even go to the same places that you used to go. Oh, you, but this is, this is, this is Hannah because she's still in the house, but things are different. I don't even know when this happened. See, the thing about God is he'll do some things in your life and you won't even know when it happened and nobody else will. All you can do is just come out and just start flat. Just start flat. Starfly. See, the, the metamorphosis here said that when this happened and the climate changed and the butterfly popped out and the, and the four legs, the four wings, I mean, were there. And so all of this took place. Wings began to grow. You didn't even know what was happening. You were just in transition in the pupil and you were closed all up. And so when you, oh, ooh, ooh, that's the gift. That's the anointing right there that popped out. Oh my goodness, I have the gift oh, of teaching. There it is. Oh my goodness, I've got some new Holy Ghost. And, and all these things start to happen to Hannah. And so now she's flying, not of her own will, but of God's will. See, when you begin to walk in not of your own power, women, but in the power of God, your whole motion changes, your whole being changes. And so the celebration here is that they get up and they go to the temple. Now you can imagine them going to the temple, Penina already not having a clue what is going on here, but Hannah knowing that the one thing that God has asked her for, he's given to her, but watch this, her biggest thing is that she's prepared to give it back. embracing your faith in the process of time. Wait a minute. This is where the line draws, the line divides, and you see the difference between Hannah and me. Hannah and you. Hannah and us. The one thing that I wanted, the one thing that I asked God for, the one thing that this lady taunted me about, God gave it to me, and I'm going to give it away again. How many of us would wait so long and work so hard to get what we wanted to get, and we got it, and then we gave it away to have it no more? Which leads us to her sacrifice. 
the one thing that the butterfly has to do is not think it's all about himself or herself as the butterfly. But you have to be willing to go out and give back and start the cycle all over again or else you don't fulfill the purpose of the butterfly. So Hannah's ability to ask God for the son came with her willingness to give back to God what he gave to her so that it could be used for his glory. You've got to embrace your journey and also be willing to give back to God what you have for his glory. I'm convinced of this. Some people don't get what you pray for because you want it for yourself. I'm a firm believer in that. She didn't ask for the son for herself. She asked for the son for God so it could be used for the service. Maybe, and just maybe, you didn't get the house yet because you don't want people to come over <laughs> to visit. Maybe you didn't get the ride yet because you are not willing to use it to pick people up to go to church or to take them to get groceries or to the doctor or wherever they need. I mean, I'm just saying, just may. I'm literally saying, just maybe, just maybe. Maybe you didn't get the job that you wanted with the money increase that you wanted because you really weren't ready to tithe. I'm just saying. Or you weren't really ready to share it for the kingdom. The biggest blessing and the beauty in this butterfly is that she was willing to give back to God the very thing that she lacked and that she gave, asked him for and that he gave her, but her loyalty was more to him than it was to him. And she was willing to give that back. I didn't just give him a child, Penina. I gave God my child on his behalf. You missed that. I didn't just give him a child. I gave God my child on his behalf. Now remember, this was Elkanah, priest of priests, the Le Levite. So now he has a son to give back for God's service. Falls right in the lineage. That's who he was. He was a servant. He was a priest. He was in that lineage. So the one thing that he did not have was his own seed to give back in service. So while she thought it was just about having a child for him, Pinono, it wasn't about that. It was about allowing this man to have a seed to give back to the kingdom of God so that his lineage could continue, his history could continue, his resume could continue, that he was working in the temple, in the temple. So your children are great and grand, and we love them all, but this one is for the king. So really what she began to see that in her obedience to God and in her loyalty to God, she was able to be more than anyone else could ever be. She was able to give more than anyone else was able to give, and she was able to become more than anyone else was able to become. The true beauty of a butterfly is when you are willing to give up what you have so the cycle can start all over again. And the difference between the two, the fly and the butterfly, was Penina was focused on what she had, Hannah was focused on who she had who she had. Penina's kids made her who she was, but Hannah's faith made her who she was. The butterfly. On this Women's Day, as we embrace our journeys and we look at this through science and we look at this through the word, we can see how we are in one of those stages right now either realizing I'm here and I don't know how I got here. Somebody just placed me here. I didn't ask to be born into the family that I've been born into, but that's my mama and that's my daddy. Oh, I don't know my mama or my daddy. Or I ended up here, or I ended up there. That's just happened. You could not control that. There's some things in your life that you could not control. When you realize and accept that, that means you've accepted your egg stage. It's that simple. It was out of my hands. And then you go through the situations and that's dealing with whatever cards you've been dealt from the setup. 
But how you deal with those things will show whether or not you are walking and embracing your faith along with God as you do that. And then in that, God will see you because he's with you and watching you all the time. And he will see you when you cry out to the Lord. Hannah cried out to the Lord. And so God separated her from the mess. Many of us are in the stage where we're asking God, God, separate me from the mess. Separate me from the mess. But when you get separated, we're going to just have to wait. Be patient in the transition stage because you won't be able to come forth as pure gold unless you are in that stage and you are waiting. And lastly, the celebration. Be ready to celebrate, but go back to the place where your worship was. Don't forget where you worship. Don't forget where you started because that's the testimony to be able to go back to do it with the same people that saw you when you couldn't do it. To be able to go back and show yourself of who you are and give glory to God for the one making the change and the transition. To be able to go back to the place because maybe, just maybe, that fly might be changed to a butterfly because of your testimony. Maybe, just maybe, that fly might see who your faith was really in and what it means. And then the sacrifice. Turn it all back over to God. Turn it all back over to God. Turn it all back over to God and allow the gifts that he gives you as a butterfly to be used for his service. Amen. God bless you.